so um, today I'm going to talk about Romax simulation methods for concept design of hybrid electric vehicles, uh, particularly concentrating on the importance of considering different drive cycles. <coughs> so first I'll just briefly introduce Romax technology for those of you who aren't familiar with who we are and what we do. I'll talk about uh, motivation for reducing carbon, why uh, hybrid electric vehicles is uh, an important part of that. Uh, the challenges of HEV design, why this is a difficult problem to solve. Uh, Romax approach and the benefits of our approach and then a couple of projects where we've applied our methods. So <coughs> Romax stands for Rotating Machinery Experts. Our key business is transmission and drivetrain design, particularly concentrating on gears and bearings. We work in a range of different sectors. Probably the most important are automotive and wind turbines. We were founded in 1989, so just over 25 years. And in 2014, we moved into this shiny new building in Nottingham. So we've been expanding quite rapidly. <coughs> Although we are an SME, we do have a global reach with uh, offices around the world, particularly strong presence in the Far East. Uh, this animation here is an automatic gearbox model in Romax Designer. Okay, R&D is an important part of what we do. We invest more than 10% of our turnover in R&D each year. So I'm just going to give you an overview of some of the other stuff that's going on. Um, obviously I don't have time to go into detail on any of these today, but um, <coughs> if any of this is interesting to you, then do come and talk to us afterwards. Um, <coughs> so this project, is about reducing parasitic losses in the heavy duty truck axle in collaboration with ANSYS and Timken and Castrol, uh, looking at uh, optimising all the various different parts of the axle and how these methods work together. <coughs> Odin is um, it's a, an EV design project, uh, in particular, we're looking at the effect of vibrations and how a vibration in the electric motor can excite normal modes in the gearbox and the other way around. And MagSplit, uh, I'll talk about later as a project where we've applied a Romax drivetrain simulation methods. Um, Protodrive is the same simula simulation methods, but this time incorporating efficiency models of the drivetrain components, engine, transmission, and electrical components. And <coughs> Romax has also sponsored a PhD project at Loughborough University, um, <coughs> a gathering real world driving data from the Toyota Prius. And this data will be used as a case study in the Protodrive project. Um, dynamics is also a key area for us in R&D. We've developed our own dynamic analysis platform <coughs> where we can create mathematical models with uh, the appropriate amount of detail for the phenomenon under investigation. Um, part of that is looking at the dynamics of bearings, understanding the underlying physics of how the different elements interact. We also have uh, an aerospace project <coughs> and the idea here is uh, to work on lightweighting actuators but without compromising on the strength and durability. Uh, so obviously <coughs> aerospace is a safety critical application. Um, a couple of wind turbine projects. Uh, the purpose of the deck project is to reduce the overall load on a wind turbine by individually controlling the pitch of the wind turbine blades. Um, wind drive is about developing a technology from a small scale 
demonstrator to industrial scale. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the motivation for reducing carbon. <coughs> it's uh, not just an altruistic uh, desire to save the planet, although it is that as well. There's also an economic argument for why reducing carbon is a good idea. Um, the current Euro 5 legislative targets are 130 grams of carbon emission per kilometre fleet average. Um, we're just about there. <coughs> However, in, from 2020 onwards, in Euro 6 regulations, this limit gets a lot stricter. <coughs> and there are consequences for manufacturers who don't meet these targets. And we find 95 euros <coughs> per vehicle per gram over the limit. So <coughs> I did some sums to work out what this total will be. Uh, if you take one and a half million passenger cars produced in the UK, multiply by that by 95 euros, multiply that by the difference between the current fleet average fuel emissions and the 2020 targets. It adds up to some quite big numbers, nearly 5 billion euros in the UK and just over 50 in Europe. So um, <coughs> particularly for the large OEMs, it's well worth investing some of that money in R&D in an attempt to reduce the carbon. <coughs> It's not a good idea to pass this cost on to the customer because then the sales will drop. So the only feasible alternative is to reduce carbon. Um, this diagram on the left is data from SMMT. It shows the uh, different vehicle tax bands and how those have changed over the years. So the, the green ones are the lowest carbon. So you can see there has been a dramatic change over the last decade or so. <coughs> um, of course, there are lots of different ways we can reduce carbon. Hybrid and electric vehicles is just one of those ways. But um, as you can see from the diagram on the right, the number of available hybrid and electric and other alternative propulsion models uh, is increasing and this trend looks set to continue. <coughs> Hybrid design is a complicated problem <coughs> and the reason for that, as um, this word cloud is uh, intended to show, is that there are lots of different layouts, lots of options for what components you have in your drivetrain, how big they should be, how you fit them together. <coughs> and um, as well as the components and the configuration, there's how you control the vehicle. Hybrids in particular are quite sensitive to the control strategy. <coughs> the consideration of the drive cycle is very important. If you're driving in the city and starting and stopping at traffic lights and roundabouts all the time, then that's uh, very different to driving on the motorway. <coughs> so overall, lots and lots of degrees of freedom. And we need a holistic approach to consider all of these options at the same time. So, uh, Romax's approach is a rapid simulation that can scan across a whole range of vehicle designs. You can consider hybridization as a spectrum from pure electric power on one side to pure petrol driven on the other, with lots of options <laughs> in between. Uh, <coughs> Uh, the, uh, 
advantage of a fast simulation is you can look at all of these options and compare them on a like-for-like -like basis. And the model fidelity at the concept design stage only needs to be sufficient for you to make an engineering judgment based on those simulation results. It's about striking the appropriate balance between speed and fidelity. <coughs> so, um, most drivetrain simulations work in the time domain. So that means that each time step is analysed in turn. So the time required to run the simulation is proportional to the length of the drive cycle. That can be a problem, it can be slow if you want to consider lots of drive cycles. So um, <coughs> what sometimes happens is that uh, <coughs> a, a vehicle is designed only considering one or two drive cycles rather than all the possibilities. And um, if you're if your vehicle is designed for a particular set of driving conditions, you'll probably find that when subject to a different set of conditions, it doesn't always live up to the fuel economy figures on the sticker. And that can be a problem for manufacturers. <coughs> so Romax simulation uses a statistical approach to drive train simulation. So instead of considering the drive cycle as a speed profile, as a set of speeds against time, it's represented as a series of operating points in the speed acceleration domain. And the advantage of this is that if you want to consider several different drive cycles at once, then it doesn't increase the simulation time because you're still looking at the same size of statistical domain. So we start by considering the vehicle operation as a matrix of speeds and accelerations and our simulation <coughs> just does uh, one calculation with the matrix rather than a bunch of different calculations for each time step. It is a backward simulation, which means that the starting point is the demand at the wheels. And the advantage of this is that it's simpler and runs faster than the forward simulation. <coughs> uh, although it does have a limitation, it doesn't model the driver behaviour quite as accurately as the forward simulation that we find for concept design. <coughs> the accuracy is good enough. So um, to calculate the attractive force at the wheels, that's a simple equation. It's just the equation of motion. You need enough force to accelerate the vehicle to meet the drive cycle and to overcome the drag forces. <coughs> so using this matrix method, <coughs> you can calculate speeds and torques and powers at different points in the drivetrain using simple matrix calculations. You can start with the tractive force at the wheels and track back through each component in turn. So track back through the gearbox. If the gearbox has multiple gear ratios in it, so we repeat this calculation for each ratio. And through the electric machine from the torque matrix and the speed matrix and an efficiency map of the machine, you can calculate the electric power then power going into the battery. And from the engine speed and torque and fuel flow rate map, we can calculate the fuel flow and sum that over the drive cycle to get the total volume of fuel consumed. <coughs> there is a control strategy 
uh, supplied to select which of the operating states gives you the best overall drivetrain efficiency. Um, <coughs> so when you're running a drive cycle simulation, we usually want to balance the battery charge. That is, we want the battery state of charge to be the same at the end of the drive cycle as at the beginning. So that enables us to do a fair comparison between the different vehicles and different drive cycles. Um, and one of the ways we can do that is to define a power threshold. So when the power demand of the wheels is greater than that threshold to turn the engine on, when the power demand is lower than that threshold to turn the engine off, the, the hybrid mode when the engine is on is broadly charge positive, whereas the electric mode is generally charge depleting. And shifting the value of this power threshold helps us to balance the battery until we reach a charge neutral state over the drive cycle. <coughs> um, this illustrates how our process works and the benefit of working in the statistical domain. So in the time domain, if you want to change something in your control strategy, and once you have the results, you need to go back to the beginning and repeat the process. Whereas in the Romax simulation, the most time intensive part is outside the optimization loop. So um, analyzing vehicle operation modes is where we calculate all of the speeds and torque and power matrices. And, um, Within the optimization loop, we apply the control strategy, balance the battery, and that's the part where we select which of the pre-calculated states gives the best efficiency for each operating point in the drive cycle. So, um, <coughs> yeah, it does run quite a lot faster than the time domain simulation in our experience. <coughs> So here is an illustrative example to show the benefits. So this is a, an extended range electric vehicle. Let's say we want to look at three different power ratings of the engine, five different generator sizes, five different battery configurations, five different motor sizes, maybe four different variants of the gearbox. If you want to look at every combination of these, it soon adds up to very large numbers of potential simulations. If we throw in a couple of different loading cases, some different drive cycle combinations, it, it can very quickly reach uh, thousands of simulations. But, um, <coughs> running in the time domain would take you a long time and using Romax simulation takes you a lot less than that and the Romax simulation is automatic as well so you just need to set up the model and uh, parameter variations at the beginning and click go and come back when it's finished. <coughs> so. Um, yeah, I mentioned that um, the disadvantage of a very fast simulation is that you lose a bit of model fidelity. We have <coughs> verified the Romax simulation method against a more traditional time domain simulation using autonomy software. And yeah, we find that the energy consumption numbers are pretty close within a couple of percent of the time domain simulation <coughs> and more importantly the trends are the same so the simulation can still enable you to make an engineering decision about how you want to optimize your vehicle and which option is better <coughs> okay um, so now I'm going to talk about a couple of projects where we've applied these methods. 
and the, the MagSplit project, the purpose of this project was to optimise the design of Magnematic's magnetic gearing device within the Ford <coughs> hybrid vehicle. The advantage of magnetic gearing is that the rotors aren't actually in contact with each other. No contact means no friction, no need for lubrication, <coughs> much lower needs for maintenance, uh, lower heat loss. So it's a, a highly efficient compact device and within the power split hybrid vehicle it replaces the planetary gear set and one of the electric machines. <coughs> so uh, Romax looked at um, various design parameters and we identified three parameters to optimise. The output gear ratio the combination of the numbers of magnetic poles <coughs> on the magnetic rotors and um, the installation options. So altogether there were more than 2,000 different variants of the system here. <coughs> and uh, with Romax simulation we managed to analyse all of these options within uh, a couple of weeks. So it enabled us to uh, assess a, a large design space and identify some promising design options in quite a, a short analysis time. <coughs> uh, we also looked at what happens if you run the simulation over different drive cycles. So here at the top, this is federal test procedure and highway fuel economy tests of the uh, US legislative cycles. Um, <coughs> and the one at the bottom is Artemis, which is a more real world cycle. So you can see it's got a low speed <coughs> bit, a medium speed bit and a high speed bit. So overall, Artemis is more realistic, has a higher average maximum speed, higher acceleration, whereas the legislative cycles are a little bit more gentle, lower acceleration. <coughs> so looking at this graph on the right, if you look at the blue line, which is the legislative cycles, that shows <coughs> that that would show that the optimum mag split ratio is about 0.6. So the mag split ratio is a design variable. It's related to the, the ratios between the number of magnetic poles on the rotors. But um, <coughs> looking at the Artemis drive cycle, you get a, a very different result. That would that does actually put the optimum value of the design variable in a different place. So I, I think this example illustrates quite well how important it is to consider different driving conditions. It, it could give you um, a different guidance as to how to optimise your vehicle. ProtoDrive project is um, a collaborative project sponsored by Innovate UK. And the aim is to build on the Romax drivetrain simulations that I've discussed so far. And um, <coughs> the key difference is that it incorporates efficiency models for all of the drivetrain components for the engine, transmission and electric machines. We have a, a multidisciplinary team um, between us. We have expertise in all of the key aspects of drivetrain <coughs> design, so Romax technology. We have expertise in transmissions, uh, CMCL innovations, so computational modeling Cambridge Limited, have expertise in engine simulations, and the electric machines and drives group at 
at the University of Sheffield is doing efficiency modelling of the electrical components. Um, yes, so um, our first case study is based on the Toyota Prius. We chose this because it's quite a, an interesting drivetrain. It's got two electric machines and multiple power flow paths and um, has lots of data in the public domain. So there is a pure mechanical path where the power flows from the engine through the planetary gear set and directly to the wheels. There's also an electromechanical path where the power flow flows from the engine through a generator and then that electrical energy drives the motor which drives the wheels. The advantage of doing it this way is that it effectively decouples the engine speed from the wheel speed. And this enables you to operate the engine at its most efficient operating point because it's not restricted to match the speed of the wheels. In addition, there's a pure electrical <coughs> power flow path, so you can drive electrically using energy from the battery. And also, while braking, you can recover some of that kinetic energy and store it as electrical energy. This is our first version of component efficiency maps. They're now integrated into our drivetrain code. Um, <clears throat> the next stage in this case study is to compare our simulation results with the real world driving data um, gathered in a PhD project we sponsored at Loughborough University. So I'm just quickly going to show you some of the results. Firstly, we looked at <coughs> how sensitive the fuel consumption is to various uh, parameter values. So we looked at these three different cycles and uh, <coughs> a combination of eight cycles. So as you can see from this graph, different cycles have very different sensitivities to the parameter values. If you were to do this kind of analysis only looking at one cycle, it would give you a different answer to the question of which parameters are most important to optimise. And <coughs> in, in some cases, the dependency actually goes in opposite directions for different cycles. Um, <coughs> One more example, we looked at varying two parameters in combination, the final drive and planetary ratio. So under the new European drive cycle, um, the, the x-axis and y-axis here are design variables. And this is a contour plot of the fuel consumption. So uh, lower numbers are better. So you can see the Toyota Prius is uh, fairly close to the optimum under this drive cycle. So we looked at some other cycles under the urban cycle, which is low speed. You can see the optimum is way over to the right. With the high speed cycle, the optimum is in a different place again. And looking at a combination of eight <coughs> different drive cycles, you can see that the existing ratios are quite a good compromise between all of these different <coughs> driving conditions. So to summarise, <coughs> we've developed a vehicle simulation tool. Its aim is to look at large numbers of designs quickly rather than to do a very detailed simulation of just one design. Um, and we feel it's the right balance between speed and fidelity. So um, I give you some numbers for the Prius case study. 
we can run the drivetrain simulation in about seven seconds. If we include calculating all of the efficiency maps, it takes under a minute. Um, yes, yeah, so I'd like to thank iMeki for the invitation to speak. Um, thanks to the ProtoDrive consortium partners. Um, if anything I've said is interesting, please come and talk to me or my colleague Jan at the back afterwards.